Are you ready yeah. to start No, I'm sat on a podcast. <laughs> we're, we're, we're using up valuable podcast This is, podcast where, this is where they'll have me. I'm ready. We're ready. Oh. We're ready, Tristan. Go on, clap us in, mate. Right, welcome to another episode of Rec Talk. We've got Dave Burtz, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Stop it. The reason in an iron recruitment. Yeah. yeah. Cheers to everyone. Yeah. yeah. It's your fault. <laughs> it's Look at that camera and you apologise to everybody watching. I'm so sorry. This is their yeah. fault. Everyone. This is it. Yeah. This is my fault. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for Dave, we wouldn't be here now. I That's... can't take all the credit, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> this, this looks a pretty well organised. Yeah. Uh, this this up, is really. probably not what you expected when we were f- when we first met. I mean, I, I thought you had to read a CV. I think that was about it, really. <laughs> right. Maybe make a phone call or two. Yeah. But... Behind behind all these panels, mate, there's CVs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think mine's up there somewhere. But... <laughs> yeah, we have like a wall of fame, basically. Yeah, yeah, all these yeah. CVs. Wall of shame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah I, but... I, so I remember when when I first met you was uh, age personnel. Yeah, PP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like the, the, the weird little sister of Michael Page that no one's allowed to talk about. It wasn't a little sister. It was like the yeah. shit little cousin, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was everyone little... loved working at PP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Page was yeah, because yeah, they, they paid the commission though. seriously. Yeah, cause, yeah we got paid well. That's right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. the MP guys they used to get like that bonus structure, didn't they? The yeah. discretionary yeah. bonus. PP was just straight commission. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah, it's Tuesday and it's wet out. Your your bonus is gone. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going in to look for because I just finished a one of the banks or whatever. And I was like, yeah, it's a finance recruitment agency. I can do finance. I remember we sat down and you were like, so you got finance experience. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I started off as a savings and investments manager and then I moved on to this and done a bit of mortgages. I've done a bit of this and I've run a branch, run this branch. And you were like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. No, no, no. When I say finance, I mean like credit control, purchase ledger, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I don't know what any of that fucking means. Yeah. <laughs> credit, yeah, yeah. We yeah, credit check like, people when we're at the I'm, bank. I'm <laughs> sat in completely the wrong place, aren't I? And we were just like, yes, you fucking mob. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> and like, no one had qualified me out. I'd managed to get ro- all the way through to sit down with like, the manager of the branch to be like, yeah, yeah, I could do finance. Like, not knowing what any yeah, of those things were. Though, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, the, the, the interesting thing is though, is, and, and we badger the guys upstairs about it all the time, which is like, take your blinkers off for a second, right? And yes, you've got a role that you're trying to fill, but, Look at the strengths of the candidate. What can you do with that candidate? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that that was the difference, wasn't it? Is that yeah? Well, then they sold me on recruitment. It was just like, well, you can we do this? Yeah, I, I agree with that. And we have a massive thing in the, in in the office now in terms of we hire for culture more than anything. And actually, I say the office like everyone works remotely, but for us, it's more about culture. If you've got the right person with the right attributes that's willing mm. to learn, that kind of fits what we want and the mold that we want. You can train them to do what you want. Right? Yeah. Well, we were talking about this the other day. Um, who was it with? It was Paul Cooney, weren't we? We were talking. Um, he's the, one of the invoice finance guys. And we were just like, nobody's born <clears> with <throat> the skill sets, right? You're like, you, we weren't born as fucking like sales machines or anything like that. Like, he wasn't born into oh, like, invoice. Yeah. Born oh, as a sales You were. Do you remember oh. I hired you? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, but, like, skills can be taught, right? And yeah. like, like accountants, the IT people, like anybody, they can they can learn it all. It's just whether they've yeah. got the willingness to want to do it. Yeah, it's interesting actually because we're we're doing a lot of hiring now, and our global sales director, who I actually knew, um, he come from uh, banking and then went into mm. mortgages. Who's the global worked, sales director? He worked at. Um, so yeah. Chris Timms. Chris Timms. There he is. Mate, he looks like you. <laughs> right. For the love of Pete, every <laughs> meeting we have, right, we are side by side on 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 Teams or Zoom, whatever it is. And everyone goes, Which one's which? Are you are you brothers? <laughs> and I'm like, no. Virgil, you know I love you, mate, but I I think he's the better looking version. Yeah, I'm gonna laugh on there. Tristan, pull him up side BB, yeah. let's get your opinion on this. Let's get ladies' opinion. Yeah, this one. I won't be offended, one. but I, I. Do you know who he looks like? Who's that rugby player? The um, oh, fucking hell, the one that's all. He's on TV all the time. He's uh, well, funny. Like is it Haskell, James Haskell. James Haskell. Yeah, is that him? Him. Yeah, yeah. He, he Chris looks, looks like he might be a bit short, though. Is he short? Uh no. I'd say he's about my height, actually. You're he's short. He's a little bit short. <laughs> <laughs> We're short. He's a bit short. <laughs> about five ten. Yeah. Right, so either way, he needs to put his profile picture up a little bit. See, if the top of his head, if that was closer to the top of the circle, he'd look you know what, visibly nah. taller. Do you know what it is? Yeah, because he's stocky. He sells. So, but think about how much more he'd sell if he was tall. Being tall is overrated. Way overrated. So it's, it's, not, it's not selling tall jeans. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But what I was going to say was, going back to yet. yet. <laughs> but yeah, go on. Going back to what you're saying is that he he come from sort of which mortgages and then gone to Octopus and was selling um, mortgages and stuff there. Mm. But he'd come from institutions that had a lot of training, right? And was really well trained. So 
he got what we were doing. And as somebody that, okay, he's come from a sports background, rugby, et cetera, which makes him competitive. But he, he picked up what we were doing. We're not, we're not a hard product. So mm. he came in and was like, I know how to sell. I just need to learn the product I'm selling. As, yeah, that financial services background, you, you're, you're backing up on this as well, is because you're so regulated in how you have to sell. You have to be yeah, you have to, super structured. To tick off certain things. So you, you've got to use and, and weave in that kind of personality and the, 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 the cutesy sales bit in between kind of, you know, FCA and PRA sort of fuck, stuff. Do you remember the amount of leaflets that you yeah, used to have yeah, to fucking... Oh, here's this like, leaflet on yeah. this, here's this leaflet on this. I need to tell you about fucking give house insurance. insurance. Let me show you these Cut fucking down. five yeah, leaflets. All, all of that yeah. shit, but I mean, in between all that, you've got to get that the personality shown through and stuff. When you're then given a no no reins, no restriction kind of um, sales gig, like recruitment or whatever, you're just like, yeah. so I can say whatever the fuck I want. This <laughs> is brilliant. Like, you know, I can lie if I want to. Don't do that, but yes. Okay. And then yeah. off you go. And you bullshit your way yeah. through. And before you they know, find it, that most people bullshit their way through an interview to yeah. get the job, and then figure out how to do it when they get there. Mate, the amount of times yeah. I wish I could just go on the interview for the candidate. So I'm just <laughs> like, listen, yeah. like, I'll represent you. We'll just go to the interview, and they go, the, the hiring manager will ask you questions. Don't answer that. <laughs> I'll answer this one for you. Do you no teams? comment. Just do it on Teams. Get the candidate to mute, and you talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a voiceover. Yeah, <laughs> there with yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you then obviously went to Page, and what was it, like five, six months later. It was, it was less than that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, I started in, I think it was like August. Yeah, just after I got married. Yeah, um, and then November time. And by, like, by October, November, I'd called you, and then they gave you the runaround. Fuck And then by February, sick. you'd started. Yeah. I don't believe you. Fucked, for... And you fucked off and left us, and you went it's off to Milton Bur- Keynes. No, Milton Keynes or Birmingham. I think it went Birmingham Mil- first. It was Milton Keynes, right? It was Mil- Milton Keynes. I mean, that... you say fucked off. I mean, I, I got promoted. Got promoted. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You know, I can you understand how it caused you a lot of devastation. <laughs> yeah, um, you fucked off and left us, and then yeah, we ended up so having to deal with Ryan and not too bad. Well, children. not went bad, but yeah, yeah, Ryan was cool. Yeah, I went to um, yeah, went down to Milton Keynes, spent some time in Milton Keynes, then went back into Birmingham, mm. which was the gig everyone wanted uh, in Birmingham. I don't know why, because fucking like yeah, okay, it was the big office and all that sort of stuff, but I just because I, I did the Birmingham thing as well, right and. The problem with that is you're so you you then go back into that really restricted environment of you know like you can't say that though really because you know fucking John Smith over over in logistics is going to be a bit. It was about walking that. out the door at six. I thought his name was then, John Horrocks. And then everyone. Was John, John, oh, was he John Horrocks? Was he logistics? <laughs> you yeah. walk out the door at six. Yeah. And everyone would go part time. Where, where are they going? Yeah. Like well, I got here at half seven. Um, yeah, but also more importantly, and at six o'clock, and I've got life. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have yeah. a wife that yeah, I want to yeah, go spend yeah. some time yeah. with. You guys all live not, in Birmingham. I committed. now have to fucking go home, yeah, which, an hour yeah. and a half home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then there was a whole. Oh, let's go to bank. Let's go to bank and have drinks after work. Like, no, fuck off. I want to go spend some time with my wife. Yeah, but I actually enjoy her company. That's times. what I used to do. Go home with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. While he's on the phone, I've got to leave at six. Claire, you listen to this. <laughs> oh, she won't watch this shit. <laughs> um, right. We're, we're, we're going to mail shot it to her every single day. <laughs> <laughs> she will. You'll be trying to head on around my business now, aren't you? We're going to now. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, I've got a great marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Claire's part of the business as well. Well, actually, just talk us through, because obviously you, you, you've yeah, gone go, through. Yeah, go through your journey. Well, how do you go from recruitment to setting up what you're doing now? And how do you drag us with you every fucking time? <laughs> <laughs> It's a good point. It's a good point, actually. Um, I try and, yeah, we've only got 45 minutes or an hour or so, so I'll try and limit it. But it actually was a kind of a combination of, you know, uh, Michael Page was great and it has an amazing sales, what was it, Sales Academy, they called it, didn't they? They put loads of sales training to boot camp, camp, sales boot camp stuff. But um, effectively, what happened is I'd had um, had back surgery. I'd like, um, from playing rugby and stuff, I had two discs removed and my spine fused. And uh, they, I was in hospital. Pussy. I know. Sorry about it, mate. James Haskell wouldn't have done that, would he? <laughs> but, yeah, Chris, Chris Timms. Chris Timms yeah. would have uh, just solid. carried just on. Dave Bush yeah. 2.0. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he he's better, he's better a bit stronger. <laughs> yeah. <That's>, yeah. <laughs> American advert. Um, yeah, so I, I think they basically just said, look, your your impact of sports, you're running and stuff, you just want to be able to go and do it. So go and join... British cycling or go and join, you know, Swim England or something like that. And they'll, mm. they'll give you a load of benefits, right? And you'll start this journey. And when I started looking at it, I looked at British cycling and it was like, well, unless I want a cycling magazine or a cycling holiday, there's no real benefits in this for me. And then I looked at, you know, Swim England and I was like, well, Papa John's Pizza and two for one at cinema. I was like, again, this isn't really valuable to me here. And 
kind of just ignored it and then carried on with my recruitment job and stuff. And then I was like, no, do you know what? There's something here. What if I was to set up this little website that just had a whole host of discounts on it? And because I was into cycling, I tried the swimming thing, but it used to mess up my hair. So <laughs> yeah. I sort of knocked it on my head and thought, I'll go, I, I have that same I'll go middle-aged man in Lycra instead. It's far, far more <laughs> fetching. I did um, that with wrestling. Do you? I've yeah. seen some of those pictures. I do that with bodybuilding. Yeah. Wear, wear these really small yellow hot pants. And just... <laughs> Tan up. <laughs> tan, yeah. tan you still tan up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always, always. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know when you've got to. You know. I go with the uh, gold dust. When you've got to go pose. <laughs> yeah. Never know when you're going to pose next. Yeah. So just stay tanned. At any yeah, point, just like rip the whole time. gear off. And yeah. like, exactly. Stay tanned. Yeah. Stay tanned. <laughs> but no, so I mean, I think it was. I kind of looked at it and gone. I think there's something here, and I started looking at my gym memberships. I joined the gym as I started to get back into it. I was like. You know, again, I've got no benefits here at all. I get the odd discount off, you know, my protein. I was like, you can find a better discount online, right? Yeah. And I had this idea that if I set up, which was originally called Discount Cycling Network, and I was like, if I'm, I'm going to go and approach every cycling brand I can and say, look, I'm going to build this platform. I'm going to get hundreds of thousands of members to join it, and I'm going to drive sales for you. Um, I started calling like how I went. I went balls to the wall first. I was like, I'm going Halfords. I'm going all the big boys. You've got to well, just bear, go. Bear in mind, there's like vouchercodes.co.uk and yeah. all that sort of stuff. They already scrape their existing, like you, yeah. you're already giving 10, 15% off yeah. to nobody's. Yeah. Yeah, just I've not- got a specialist like network yeah. that I'm trying to set up here. So yeah. well, give me that fucking 10% discount. Yeah. And actually, yeah. <clears throat> if I kind of give you the actual model of how it works, it probably, probably helps it. And then I'll kind of tell you how I kind of move through that recruitment into this yeah, but yeah. effectively as i was researching it i found like two fundamental issues right you've got this health organizations whether it's gyms governing bodies um you know mass participation events they're all trying to find ways to you know engage or retain their members and they're trying to do it through rewards but they're doing it badly they're either trying to manage it themselves and the offers aren't that great and as you say you can find them online right they're just scraping them from voucher yeah, codes voucher, or whatever group one, thinking, yeah, all these. or they're taking an employee benefits platform plugging it in and thinking that people will use it and they don't mm-hmm. so I sort of looked at this and went well none of those are tailored towards the audience so if I created something that was tailored towards the audience I'm pretty sure they'd use it I then looked at it and went, well, actually, what a lot of people were doing is working on a sort of standard affiliate. So like, you go to Nike and they go, I'll give you a 5% discount and then I'll give you a 5% commission based on what you buy. Mm-hmm. And I go, great, but that's the same as everyone else. So I go, well, look, forget the commission. And in my head, I was like, this is long game play here, mm-hmm. but I think there's something here. Forget the commission, I want the 10% discount, which is the biggest you can find, right? And they go, okay, but you're not, you're, you're not, we're, yeah, not paying, we're, you, we're not paying you. Users, don't, yeah. don't worry about that. Let yeah. me figure that bit out, right? And they go, all oh, right, well, it's risk-free for us. Great, I'll give you that. But as I started to go through and I started taking all of these cycling brands initially and building them all in, I suddenly got to about 75 brands. They've all got bigger discounts than you can find anywhere online. Mm. And then you start telling people about it and people start joining. And, <clears throat> you know, you rolled on 18 months as a little part-time project and we had 175,000 cyclists in our platform using these codes. And I just let it tick along. It was a bit of a holiday fund. You were still in recruitment at this point? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just kind of bugged me because I had six months where I had back surgery and I couldn't really do much. So I was like, you know, spending my lunchtime going and getting cycling and endurance magazines and flicking through and going, oh, there's a brand and turning the page over. And then because I had the confidence to do it, I'd sit there cold calling in my lunch hour going, look, I'm, I'm going to create it's showing your age though, there, but actually, I mean, like, magazines. 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 Folding the page up and using the magazines? highlight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who buys magazines? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a fair point. Yeah. I do, but they've now moved to like Paw Patrol and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 for the kids. Yeah. But they're but fucking iconic. They're like two, three quid. Out of <laughs> More than four, nine, five, mate. You get a free toy with them as well, though. Yeah, my kids are like... That's five minutes. Daddy, can we have this one? I'm looking like six ninety nine. Six are you shopping waitress? Just, yeah, you're the co-op. <laughs> you're, you're a lot more savvy than I am. My, my daughter just picks it up and she's like, can I have this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, one. Yeah. And then I just end up paying for it. And then I look at my credit card and be like, why the fuck have I spent so much money at the fucking co-op? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I was still in recruitment. I just kind of looked at it as a bit of a, always been a bit of a sales entrepreneur and was like, there's something here. Um because it's an issue for me, and I think most entrepreneurs always try and solve issues that they found themselves. Right, this is an issue. Yeah. I think I, I don't find this, issue that they I can do this better myself. Yeah. And I kind of just kept it as a bit of a <clears throat> bit of a side project, and was ticking over, and it was um, you know, a bit of a holiday fund. And me and the wife would go, "Well, oh, you know, it's made a bit of money this year. Let's go on holiday, yeah. etc." And it was, you know, I was doing it. Yeah, exactly. You know, that kind of stuff. But then 
as I kind of moved through and you started getting towards, you know, three, four years later, we started growing some of these brands. And this is really a part time still. And people go, God, this is a really good idea. Like, actually, wow, there's nothing else out there like this. And we were starting to get bigger brands coming in going, well, can we be part of that? And they weren't cycling brands. They were then running brands and triathlon brands mm-hmm. and sports brands going, oh, you've got this platform. We'd love to be part of that. And, you know, kind of skip through and you roll on. We now work with 400 of the top sports brands in the world. Yeah, because, see, we saw this. We were like, oh, Dave's gone from doing just cycling to, like, wider sports. Yeah. Didn't at one point you try and use the, the was extreme sports. cycling network to then kind of be like, so discount running network and, like, kind of yeah. just keep flipping the thing. Yeah, and we, the cha- we yeah. changed the name to discount discount sports network to yeah, try and grow it again. And actually what we found is that discount sports network, people loved it, and American brands like Nike and Under Armour were like, we don't want to be associated with a discount, discount. platform, yeah. but we'll offer you a discount. Yeah, but, we just don't use. But the you're word. called discount, so we can't yeah. do it. And we were like, "What?" You know, so you it would just get it though, right? I kind of get it, but everyone. Though, it? But like, at the same think, time, yeah. If, if if I've got a product that like I want everyone to buy, but Poundland, yeah. like, can I put it in my store? Like, yeah. I don't know, man. A- Apple do it. A- you Apple didn't. just they <laughs> refuse to allow their products to be discounted. Not true. We have a discount with Apple on the watch. On the watch, on MacBooks, on everything. Really? Yeah. But this is where it comes down to what we were talking about earlier off camera about creating the need, right? Mm. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it and I'll show you where we are now, which is why we now get the discounts we do. But we went through a couple of iterations of going from cycling into different sports. and But now we work with 400 of the world's top sports brands. We negotiate exclusive discounts with them and build them into our platform. But effectively, we are... Yeah, we're a software company. We've created a white label platform that we are sell B two B. So, mm-hmm. you know, initially identified with British Cycling, going there's no benefit. So we now sell it to British Cycling, and we go, you know, this platform that we now have, we can white label it. We can build it into your app. We can build it into your website, so it feels mm-hmm. like a native part of your your operation. Yeah. That overnight, it's plug and play. You suddenly have access to hundreds of discounts that yeah. then drive and, 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 and they're tailored discounts. Doing, not, yeah. not you but the they're tailored and they're relevant to the audience. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, the technology we have is that take a cycling brand, they can turn off what brands don't want and just leave cycling yeah. brands in there. Yeah. So it's tailored to them. You as a consumer go next day. Oh, there's a rewards tab there. Click on it. You know, through our little bit of technology, you don't need to separate sign on. API just tells us you're a signed up member. And all of a sudden, bang, you've got 200 cycling brands in there. And overnight, mm. you're like, I now see value to my £83 a year membership. Mm. And if you look at that from a gym perspective, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the low cost gyms, your pure gyms, gym groups are always trying to find ways to retain those members. Yeah. And again, this now, you plug in 400 brands overnight and it's like, and it looks and feels like them. And we can build it into their app. You're like, Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I can it's save a massive money value on, add. You know, yeah. Gymshark, forty percent off Garmin. You know, all, so all that's, of that's the app, then, is it? Mm. Yeah. So it's it's not actually, believe it or not, it's not actually an app. It's a yeah, it's a it's a platform that we have an uh, we have a REST API that yeah. gets built into other people's um, apps or websites that make them make it look like theirs. It's theirs, yeah. yeah. But yeah. there's we then started looking at it and going, <clears throat> well, that solves that retention piece. The API then solves that annoying when you get an email and you see a discount and you go, I want that, and you click on it. I'm a member of British Canoeing, and I am going to throw British Canoeing under the, the bus because they won't talk to us for some reason. Yeah, the moment. British Canoeing. Um, <clears throat> how, many Brits, how, many, how many Brits go canoeing anyway? Paddleboarding. There was you that. need the insurance for paddleboarding with your kids and stuff on the river. But they send me an email all Just the time. Just stop doing it. <laughs> but they send me an email all the time going, here's some benefits. And because I'm in this world, I look at it, and I go, click, and then it'll go, well, oh, Log in, and I'm like, right, I log in. Like, I've sent you an email to to check to, to to click that it's you. All right, click on it. Then lands me on a dashboard. Oh, for the love of God. And then I'm on a dashboard, and then I go to rewards, and then like, right, right, and then I've got to search in. What was it I was looking at again? Right, Nike. It's not a bad example because they don't have them, but Nike. And then you get to you're seven nine clicks away yeah. Yeah, from yeah. getting anything. And you're yeah. like, that's a massive issue as a consumer. But that's, that's there's lazy, no benefit to the brand, and there's no benefit to going, the consumer. Yeah, but it works though. Well, this is a workaround though, model. That, it doesn't work though. Yeah, yeah. This, and, and, and that's yeah, the thing because this is the this is the um, the kind of we see this in the the recruitment world. We see this uh, kind of in house as well. In, in that we're, we're really fortunate that Tristan kind of gets the commercial side right. But this is why things like commercial uh, or project managers or BAs exist within the developer world because a developer will look at that and go, 
So you asked me to build a system where somebody goes into their email and then ends up here. Mm. Yes. So I did that. You know, yeah, but there's nine fucking clicks and yeah. I've got to go back and forth to get to this point. And the, the, but you exactly didn't specify that that, that yeah. was an issue. Yeah. It did what I've asked you to do. There you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're, we're really lucky that, you know, I, I sort of had the idea, founded a business, and then brought my brother-in-law in who's, you know, marketing. And then we have Todd, who is uh, my our co-founder as well. And he's 30 years of technology, right? And he's done 29 Ironman. So he understands, A, this ecosystem, but understands what a good journey looks like. Mm, okay. So we have this really cool triangle that matches sales, operations, marketing, and, and technology. Yes. But... You know, it's now, you know, Endurance Zone is now officially the world's largest sports rewards and engagement platform. And it's not bad for a recruiter, is it? It's is that based right. on like, so actual users or based on the Yeah, so discount. we launched the, well, both. So we have, you know, in terms of sports rewards, there's very, very little competition that do it to the level that we do. Mm-hmm. We have over 400 brands now, the biggest discounts. Like, we have the largest discount with um, Garmin Europe, like 40% off. You know, so again, massive discounts. But then also, we only launched the white label product eighteen months ago, and now we've got almost three million members using our not platform. Not to throw and not to underwrite what what you've kind of done, but like, what do Garmin even do now? Like the, the sat nav stuff is just fucking faded out, hasn't it? Like people, yeah. don't... but what but what they do, and this is the thing, right? And this is about what they keeping do is make li- big profit margins if they can give forty percent <clears> away. Hundred percent. That, that that shit is pure profit. <laughs> <is> what they <laughs> do, mate. Exactly. <laughs> Shout out to Garmin. Uh, <laughs> you're, fucking, you're doing your shit. Try Apple. <laughs> try Apple. Well, they've got but, the uh, the watches now as well, haven't they? Yeah, but, but this is, but this is it. So they kind of they started off in sailing and did the old technology piece, and then aviation did that piece. Mm, okay. But then actually, if you think about, and this is why we always say. People go, would you go into the corporate sort of benefits? They're like, no, because there's loads of those companies out there trying to do yeah, this corporate it. benefits risk. Yeah. We are super niche. We keep it tailored towards mm-hmm. that sport. If you are a gym, a health club, a governing body, subscription model business in that space, we've got you covered, right? Because we've got all of these sports brands. But Garmin, Garmin have all of the watches. They do the cycling computer. So for instance, you know, your sort of Garmin bike computer that you can route map all of your cycling on, it's five, 600 quid. But if you're a member of... Fitness Not First, anymore. for instance, yeah. you get it for 300. Your membership to Fitness First does not cost you 300 quid a year. Mm. So automatically, your membership has just paid you, yeah. basically. Yeah. It's paying you to be a member. Yeah, because what you're doing is dealing with Fitness First, not their customer base. You yeah. know, you're, not, you're not trying to target. <laughs> so or, we, or are you? So we've done, we've done sort of twofold to it. So initially, we, we looked at it and gone, right, you know, we'll go B2B. We'll white label this and say, hey, British Cycling, you can now have this and it will look and feel mm-hmm. like you, right? It will help drive retention. It will mm-hmm. help drive engagement. Great. The consumer is then happy to say, wow, look at all these additional benefits. They're real benefits, tangible benefits. And you tapped into their entire customer base. And then we started looking at it going, the way we created the platform is got like a big hero banner on it. Mm-hmm. And then you have something called hot offers underneath it. And we were looking at it going, well, you know, what's going to drive engagement? And you nailed it earlier. You said something where we were presenting this and people go, oh, how much to have that? And we were like, that's interesting. People are asking how much to have that big spot, that visibility spot. Yeah. So we yeah. started researching a lot more last year about it. And then now, basically, we handle all of the marketing and advertising for these brands. So Fitness First, we come and go, great, Fitness First. Not only can you have this platform, we're going to charge you for it, but it's going to help you retain and gain new members and drive engagement. Um, but also you see that big banner spot there and you see the little hot offers and stuff like that we're going to sell that spot to Nike or Fitbit whoever's going to pay for it Mm -hmm. because you have a core audience that they're after right so when we onboard them we go here's a pro forma how many members have you got you know 66,000 members how many are male how many are female how often do they go to the gym etc and we go hey Nike here's all this data and they go great we'll have that spot and then we rev share it with Fitness First Mm -hmm. So now Fitness First is going, well, hold on one second. So you give me this platform. Okay, I've got to buy it, but it's going to help me gain and retain my members and drive engagement anyway. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to sell all my advertising space within the platform and just give me money at the end of the month. Like, yeah. And then they were like, so we've got TVs in our gyms um, with loads of unique eyeballs. Could you you sell those for us as well? And we're like, yeah, we could do that actually. Yeah. So what the fuck are Fitness First or or insert kind of customer here? What are yeah. their marketing team doing? 
<laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, what do they need to outsource that you look, to? You're looking at the marketing team, right? Yeah, this is the and point, I, and right? I think like, this is it, right? Just so literally you, overnight, you're kind of going, listen, whatever you guys are paying this department to do, well, you might as well. So here's a great example. Active Network, who are our biggest client in the US, right? So, you know, they've got over a million members, largest events registration company in the world. Yeah, if you do the New York um, Marathon, you're buying your tickets to them. If you go to a D1 American football game, you're buying your tickets to them. They um they put a testimonial out on our site that kind of said, not only have you been able to supply us with the biggest and deepest discounts we can find, but you've reduced our overhead costs because you do it all now for us. And you've driven engagement and sign up for our platform. Like, this is a no-brainer. And it is because you've kind of gone, we have these three verticals, right? You as a as an organization want a white label platform to drive engagement, but there it is. Yeah, there Consumer, I want the biggest, deepest discounts I can get. Great. There it is. Got you covered. Yeah. And then advertisers go, hey, we want to be in that platform. We want to hit a really core cool audience. Google, you know, Instagram is now so hard to actually yeah. hit that audience. Mm -hmm. We can go, but three million people in our platform, you know, every single one of them is a sports consumer. You know, and if you want to hit you know, lacrosse players between the age of 18 and 24 in Wyoming, we can do that as well. Here they are. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. There may only be 15 of them, but yeah. there, there they are. Yeah. And then we've so, got loads of really cool stuff. So the more you look at it, you go, gyms have got off peak and peak members. And they're like, yeah, but we can't, how do we move people from that uh, an off peak to a peak membership? And we're like, oh, that's a really, yeah, that's a good idea. Actually. I don't know. Okay. So we'll go away and think about it. And we're like, I know. Let's create four different levels of memberships, four different tiers that the partner controls. So now you can go, right, tier one, let's call it off-peak. I'm going to show 50 rewards under that. And then I'm going to lock all the rest. Mm -hmm. So now it shows them that it's locked. So you click on Garmin, you go, oh, Garmin, 40% if you click on it, it says upgrade to peak membership now to unlock this benefit. And you're like, <laughs> right, okay, and my membership is an extra 10 quid a month, but I'm going to save 200 on a new watch. Go okay, and buy great. it anyway. I'll just done. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it now not only are you provide them with this engagement platform, and then providing them with revenue through advertising, you know, going and now this acts as a sales tool to help drive people through your sales funnel. That's mad, isn't it? So well, doing all right, you are for someone from recruitment. <laughs> well, bad for a thick, eh? <laughs> for, some, for someone who's basically nineteen k purchase edge clerks. <laughs> no, honestly, you yeah, know, the hardest no, thing. Like genuinely, not, that, that that that's that's phenomenal from like a genuine like side hustle of look there's a gap here i'm gonna try and nudge it and see what i can do yeah. to it to then well, kind of be like started as a, a again we we will we like we know from experience because we know you right and we're not we're not from like that um you know london elite or like the entrepreneurs clubs and all that yeah. stuff. we're not the london just, school of business or anything like that yeah, mean, like we're just two fucking... fucking lads from calf and like you hired us into recruitment and so we know you well enough to be like He's just a normal guy who's looked at this and kind of gone, there's a, there's a niche here. I want to yeah. exploit that and just keep pulling on it and keep pulling on it. And it, it, use my training and like stuff from... Yeah. Because we, we tell the guys upstairs all the time, what's the worst that's going to happen when you business development call a client? Is they going to say no? That, who cares? But it's, a confident, it's a confidence thing, isn't it? And some people, thank you. So, some... Some people have it, some people don't. No, but this is right. It's a mentality thing. But you can take an idea from literally a idea to, right. okay, I want to try this out. Well, it's how bad, it's how you bad had you good, want it. You had, you had a, a very good, clearly kind of constructed career in front of you, right? Because you could still be in recruitment, be a I was on associate a, director. I was on a good or, salary or and good bonuses. You know, yeah, but when yeah, you yeah, left, yeah. You, were, you were what? Like owner, shareholder? Director, of, yeah. Yeah, so you, you were up there in terms of you'd kind of yeah. hit. You had, a com you had a more than comfortable living and you've still kind of gone, yeah, nah. Yeah, do you know what? It was that conversation of going to the wife like, babe, um, <laughs> you know that little side yeah. hustle? <laughs> just going to remortgage the house, spend our life savings and just go for it. You all right with that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Good, go on, why not? <laughs> also, there's this thing called only feats, which you could try out. <laughs> it will pay the bills for a little while whilst I do this. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that, that, that all stemmed though from from you having back surgery, right? Yeah. So you've had back surgery and then it's literally just a fucking case of just like, think if you weren't a fat bastard, you, you none of this would have happened. You are not wrong. <laughs> you are not wrong. Also exactly that. I'm gonna put a poll out there. I'm, I'm putting in for another back surgery. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah, yeah. See what it's idea is gonna come out the back of it. It's a million dollar idea. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna come out like waltzing into idea number two. Right, guys, yeah. fire up. Here's his like kingpin by name and uh, yeah. and by nature, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. No, honestly, that's really, really impressive. Like 
So and, what are you now then? Are you are you are you a marketing business? Are you a, a, a tech business or are you somewhere in between? Is there a whole no, new industry that you've unlocked? Pretty much a whole new industry, I guess, in, in, in terms of with the you know, we're the only people in the space. We're kind of mm. paving a way, which is that's pros and cons to it, right? The pro is it's like it's amazing, right? You've got this opportunity to go, go, go before somebody else jumps in. Because somebody can at any point, right? Yeah. And this 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 is the this is the I suppose the challenge that you guys have got to consider is you know, somebody could take this model and kind of be like, oh, hey, that works in the cooking industry. The, yeah. you know, trying to think of other... Like, they can do it in the cooking but industry. They, they, yeah. Just don't come into my... Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The thing is, though, it's... um, I'm just super competitive. Mm. We've got a competitive team. And I think... Have what, you got a competitor, though? No. We have, we have parts of competitors, but... I'm super competitive, so there is a competitor who I'm not going to name no. um, that those. do the gym market badly. Okay. And again, it kind of kicks you out. And you have to do a separate sign in and all this kind of stuff. And I have a thing that go right. They do that portion of what we do. The discounts aren't as good. They use mm-hmm. gym not as good. But I can't help it. I say to the team, right, you know them? Yeah, bury them. I want them gone. And that's just the competitive nature of me. So, and I always try and say this to ourselves. But is that guys, a case of adding that, value in terms of your proposition by way of bury them, or is yeah. that a case of like fucking? What are they doing badly, and how can we bloody make sure that we do it better? But co- competition and, makes you innovate. Competition stro- like pushes innovation and yeah. advancements, right? Without com- competition, yeah. people get complacent. Yeah. You know, and so. But take Facebook. Up until Twitter yeah. came out, Facebook had the monopoly of it, and they were just fucking killing it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until Twitter yeah. came in that they were like, "Fucking well, actually, yeah." It, but it, TikTok but it, have made YouTube have to, to to kind of pivot and move to a different type of model. Like I, say, yeah. I think we've got competitors, but in different, like in different facets. So you've got. Do you think your competitors are very very niche at what they're doing, and, and so it take, kind of falls into one of the We have somebody that isn't that really got. a competitor, and actually, we, we had a meeting with them this morning about partnering with them. Mm. There's a company called MyZone, hundreds of millions of turnover um real engagement in the fitness industry they have these bands you know workout you're in these digital uh, like digital um like badges like on maps you turn out and actually they've, yeah. they've got millions of members and everyone's like oh, i want to level up i want to level up it's a competitive so they've driven this engagement piece but they're not really giving the user um anything apart from that user's competitive so we can look at it and go well actually what if we helped build our rewards in and when when they level up they level up and get a whole host more discounts that help them on this journey. New running shoes, mm-hmm. Gymshark mm-hmm. discounts, Apple watches, that kind of thing. And they're like, oh, actually, that 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 could work. Yeah. So there's, they're doing a part of the engagement mm-hmm. piece that we're doing, but then how can we help them? Yeah. And it's because we're B2B and we're not direct consumer that I think they're not competitors. Mm-hmm. It's like there's a company, you know, 330 million turnover called Gym Pass. And they kind of do what we do, but in a different way. So rather than work with products, what they've done is they've gone and gone and got discounts with all the gyms, 2,000 gym chains. Oh, just explicitly gyms, right. Negotiated exclusive discounts with them. And then they go and sell them to corporates. That's stupid. But but is it? Because it's a corporate benefit. They're saying, hey, you can get 50% of your gym. And they do it in the same way of like cycle to work. So it comes off. Right, okay, right. yeah, fine. So okay. Like, so this is really cool, right? These, these, these guys are huge, right? yeah. massive, raises loads of money, global money. But you've only done half the thing there, right? Mm. Somebody, you know that person's going to the gym. Why have you not gone and got loads of discounts on gym products and then go, hey, now, yeah, yeah. Yeah. here's loads of gym products, here's you a know, bottle, discounts. Here's some, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So we're like, okay, in so how do, we help, how do we help build yeah. into that? How do, how do we help their proposition? Mm. So we're not the... We're almost like the silent ones, right? Because no one knows it's us. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's white labeled. That's the behind you're white labeling, right? So you it's don't how have to can be we the, help yeah, yeah. you you're, as a you're not building. You don't need to sell your brand. You, you, no. The brands that you're selling into are selling their brands. It's a, it's the service. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're a pure tech play, right? We are a SaaS platform. You mm-hmm. know, depending on how many members a client has, we charge them anywhere from five grand a month to twenty five grand a month for three years, right? Lovely. Yeah. And simple and then we share the advertising with them and i think this is where it suddenly comes they in also like, getting these kickbacks coming through from yeah. from and we're solving, their own advertisers well, we're solving an issue for them and you know any I think space that's the in. important thing right because this for you started off as fixing an issue rather than a i yeah. need to make money out of this yeah, yeah. it was a fix an issue i just wanted to discount halfords to get some bikes <laughs> so I wanted. Next thing I know, I had forty percent off Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next thing I know, I got sixteen you know, star. Yeah, yeah. Three million members. Still haven't got a discount, Halford. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Halford, step it up, man. Jesus. 
<laughs> so I mean you you and I think this is the thing with with all with all good entrepreneurs like the people that go into to, to entrepreneurship and start their own business for the sake of oh I know I can make a shit ton of money here won't it's it's nah. as simple as that they just won't if you're chasing the money yeah there's that there's that element a lot a lot of the time um, you're driven by the wrong thing though yeah but a lot a lot of the time it's it's you're addressing a problem that actually doesn't need to be solved in the you know, there's a, there's a lot of startups and a lot of like entre- I hate that word entrepreneur but there's a lot of those things that fail because it's like no no this was a problem to you not to the masses and yeah if it was a problem to the masses there's two things number one it would already be solved as in there'd already be somebody doing what you do or your route to market wouldn't be as kind of straightforward as you think it is. Do you know what I mean? Because this wasn't straightforward for you. You still had to do the I, no, I, spending I, I, I and the graft. I, I, and I, I, it, wasn't, it was not an easy, easy graft. Yeah, and, no. and you can see why people don't do this because trying to manage 400 brands and make sure all those codes work because we've all been on, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, one of the voucher sites and yeah, the codes yeah, voucher work, codes right? or whatever. Yeah, you have to and, hire and people to check work, codes yeah. every single yeah, week. Yeah, I think the, sure the reality is that if you're looking at, if you're looking at, um, even employment isn't fucking easy, right? No. There are there are people who who make it really fucking hard to to employ them, right? Because they're just they're just fucking no good at it. They're just lazy, right? We've had people that that work for us where we're just like, fuck me, man, just pull up your socks and work a little bit, right? Like Tom, like Tom. <laughs> yeah, he's upstairs. Right? Tom, fucking pull up your socks, mate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he won't watch this. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I've told him to watch the Benjamin Dennehy podcast three times, and they're still just like. Yeah, no, I, I watched all of your podcasts when it I saw is. it come out. I went on and watched every single one of them. I was like, "I need to see what they're going to say. I'm going to yeah. see how they're going to set me up." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, the yeah. selves. Yeah. This is where we're, 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 you did this to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look what yeah. you turned this into. No, no, but, <laughs> my, my point <laughs> is, though, like, berate me. <laughs> even, even the yeah, you boys. <laughs> we were happy in financial services. Yeah. Yeah. All I no. wanted was a job in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> but like, employment can be challenging, right? And and actually, like, you, you'll know, running your own business is fucking stressful, right? There's yeah gray hairs there's fucking sleepless nights there's yeah. there's the, the worry the constant worry of fuck man how am i gonna get around this because there is yeah. no there's no safety net yeah. right yeah, you're, the, you're the cleaner you're the you're yeah. the cleaner the accountant the marketing yeah. person you're fucking everything mm-hmm. in between right and and, yeah. and the thing the thing it's fucking good though isn't it? Oh, it is somebody it's, someone, it's, someone could, said could you go back and work for someone now Nah, someone said to me the other day, they were like, you, you seem like you've got a lot on i was like yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> like literally as it stands at the moment technical audit financial audit mm-hmm. and a fundraise like all over the place up and down us back so, so oh, i fucking love it yeah but that's because <laughs> you absolutely but that, love yeah, yeah. it but that's because you're solving a problem though right you're passionate about it's the problem you're that you're solving about, yeah, exactly you're passionate about the problem but also you you said earlier about there's a lot of people will chase the money right and they'll look at someone like jim shark and go oh yeah. they make loads of money i'm going to try and do something very similar rather than actually do their own thing and for me the competitive thing is always, i'm like how how, how big can we can we get this mm. you know and every time we win a client for me it's like yeah we, we are you know we have cracked it here we have got something so still how, got that, how, still let's got go. that buzz of, let's go. yes and i say it to the yeah. sales guys right if you do the process the product sells itself right so if you go through the process of selling the product and talking about the product mm-hmm. you, the money comes with it and it's the same with any business right if you do the business and you do it well and you try and solving the issue that that's in front of you whatever that mm-hmm. might be mm-hmm. the, the money comes with it and this is it. it. It's about, like I said, it's about it's about fixing that that issue. And some 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 problems aren't worth fixing. Some problems it's it's harder to fucking try and find the mm-hmm. solution than it is to actually yeah, fix what the problem yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But I think for for the most part, if you're chasing if you're chasing cash, then you just it's just not going to work. Well, they all say it, don't they? That the cash will come. You know what I mean, yep. the money part will come. If you want to chase the if you want to chase the pound or chase the dollar, that's fine. Go and do that on someone else's dime, right? Don't go and do that on somebody else's cart. Go and get well. Somebody a, who's already established in that market, yeah, right? Go, go, like if you're go a recruiter and work for somebody and and kind of okay, and then you're a number and, and you can decide. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and you can. You can. It's fucking yeah, easy. If you if you genuinely want to build a life for yourself, and I call it the little kingdom model of like you know, use your your things like your business that you've set up and and whatever to create yourself a little kingdom in which you're happy, you know. Yeah. And that might be a portfolio of properties. That might be. A memory bank of holidays that might be 10 kids what, whatever makes you happy whatever you consider to be your kingdom build that and be happy with that but the guy that where we see a lot of uh, especially recently when we've interviewed a lot of a lot of young what we consider to be ambitious people 
they're all so focused on chasing that money element. They want the and money and they want it now. If you go how on much, social how, media, how much can I, what's my yeah, which is, if you go on social media, all you're seeing is side hustle. You can go onto the Nike oh, website oh, and get the five percent yeah. commission. Do you and know all you got followers do is, you'd have on TikTok if you talked about your side hustle right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 How yeah, I turn my side hustle into a what, however million turnover yeah. business? But do you know, do you well, know what people don't realize? I, I'm a, I, I'm obsessive with it, so I'm um. I'm somebody that goes to literally goes to bed listening to podcasts. Um, wakes up and I listen to a podcast. If I'm in a car, I'm usually well. My wife will say it's one or two things: listening to a podcast or listening to country music. Um, so <laughs> I thought that'd give you a bit of a bit of a giggle. That's the <laughs> whitest thing you could have ever said, <laughs> isn't it? Just podcast and German, I got the <laughs> Conway Twitty. <laughs> he knew. Yeah, that's yeah, what family guy. Yeah. He knew. Um, but it is. I'm listening to podcasts, and you're listening to people, and you're trying to better yourself and learn about it. And mm. and I think we were chatting off camera about how going from recruitment when you're a number, okay, had a team of people, but you're still a sales person, still a number yeah. on you that you had to deliver. The hardest bit is then moving into how do you scale this business when it's gone from me to three to five to ten to mm-hmm. sixteen? And you know, and the plan now is, you know, with the the race that we're going through now is to get to forty eight staff across multiple locations. You know, and we have staff in Belgium at the moment, we have staff in the US at the moment, you know, and that's gonna grow with more bums on seats. We accidentally got 185,000 members in Australia. So whoops. we're now whoops, <laughs> we're now looking at how do we, you know, it kind of was one of those that somebody approached us and we were like, Well, yeah, you're a perfect candidate slash product for this so okay let's yeah. go and then they were like we want this and it's like right but the easy <laughs> thing is we already <laughs> yeah. have the brand so we go back to them and go hey can you fire up australia can you activate this code in australia now great yeah. and it's like clearly there's a market there so we can we, yes. can, we can pivot so how, yeah, did the, how did the recruitment side of it then so your journey from recruitment into yep. what you're doing now like where, where's the where's the transferables Cause Cause that's, that's, that's a great question. Cause, yeah, because I'm telling you now, Michael Page or Page Personnel or, or any big fucking corporate recruitment agency out there, right? They would not give you that level of freedom for you to be able to to kind of do what you're doing now. Or confidence. You know, so uh, cash I, agree. Back, I agree. They, with you they will that. tell you the world is shit out there. We're yeah. the only ones that treat you the way we treat you. And yeah. you should be grateful that you've got a job here because outside it's dog eat dog and you'll fail and you'll fail miserably, right? And these are the stories we, about the boutiques you know, look, the other and, and, and we look back now, rose tinted glasses, like nearly six years on, right? And we're like, oh yeah, and we'll reconnect with people from Page and we'll keep in touch with them. <laughs> the bulk of them disconnected with us when we left. The bulk of them yeah. didn't have anything to do with us, didn't want anything to do with us, and like wished that we would fail when we were because but and, and through no fault of their own, just because of the, the, the kind of the narrative that's set within that kind of corporate world. So how do you go from working for what we know is at such a toxic place at times to I, kind of being know, like, I, I, I'm going to back I, myself. I, I disagree. Do this. I, like, yes, I totally agree with kind of all the points where they were like really trying to shut us down and all that sort of stuff. But I don't think it was necessarily toxic. I think that was probably the wrong word. I think they, what, what places like Page and Hayes and all that sort of stuff do is they, they create a really good culture that benefits them. Um, um, Agreed. Yeah, and what they do is they... they it, st- it's a culture piece, but there's two sides to that. The culture is spot on in terms of how they created the the sales approaches to things, their academies, the pressure of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. role plays, because actually it does make you a better salesperson. Yeah, yeah I'll, It I'll, also I'll whittles that. out shit. Like who, who's in there because they've had a good interview and actually isn't a good salesperson, yeah, yeah. isn't cracked up for this. 100% agree with it's about their, what benefits them. Mm-hmm. But they're a juggernaut. Of course they are. They're a massive business and they've got shareholders coming out of their ears. You know, they've got investors coming out of their ears that unfortunately when you start getting to that scale, you've got to produce numbers because that is all it's about. Yeah, you got to. All it's about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going through this round ourselves now, we get told, be careful which VC you go go to and which, you know, who you're talking to because it's all about numbers. Whereas for us, it's it's about the culture of the business. The numbers come, right? The sales numbers will come. But to answer your question about how, where's the transferable skills and stuff? So, I genuinely believe there are two two things that have enabled me, three things that have enabled me to get to where we are as a business and me to where I am now. Back so, surgery. So again? Back surgery. Back, back <laughs> surgery. The doctor that shoved his knife in my back. 
And the nurse that gave me a reach around. Um, <laughs> no, so it was a he then. Yeah. <laughs> Steve was gentle. Yeah. It was a gentle level. Merce, I think. Um, <laughs> Merce, yeah. No, it's, one, is, one is family. So I, I came yeah. similar to you guys, right? So, you know, mum, you know, born not into money in, in London. The beginnings, right? You know, dad, Sheffield, council estate, mm-hmm. you know, but worked hard. You know, I never went missing, you know, never went. You know, without anything, as a never went missing. <laughs> never went missing. Never went missing. Yeah. They always knew where I was. Yeah. Um, Fuck you, I, 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 never, I never went. Never went without anything as a kid. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. yeah. But the one thing that they instilled in us was um, work hard. And then the other thing right. was sport, right? So the second thing is sport, which was you know for me it was rugby, and it was that kind of team competitive. If you're if you got the right people around you. You could be playing a, a tough game, but you knew that person was there. You'd be having a scrap in the middle of a game. You knew that person was there. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And actually, Chris Timms, our global sales director, is one of those people. That's why I knew he was the right person for that job. Because And because he's a better version of you. Because he's a better looking version of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's fired tomorrow. But, um, <laughs> and, then the, uh, and then the third one is Michael Page. So yeah. it's really weird because for me, I'd gone from... Where were you before Michael Page? So I'd gone from playing rugby and then I, I joined a company called Samurai Sportswear, which was uh, our sort of sponsors at the time. And Samurai they made, Pizza Cats. They made... Um, oh, there's a blast from the past. There's a blast from the past. They Samurai made... Pizza Cats. Remember that? No. Tristan, hey. bring up Samurai Pizza Cats while, while they're talking. Apologies for cutting you off there. That's <laughs> right. Oh, oh, on, I'm yeah. interested in seeing It's an old 80s cartoon. Well. Are you in Toronto? Samurai Pizza too. Cats. <laughs> How old are you? I'm I'm 37 as of yesterday. As of day yesterday. Four. Yeah, day oh, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You look older. Somewhere. Oh, I oh, know. I feel older. Mate, they used my back. back now for the Chris. They Chris used to. Bear, they used to run a pizza shop, right? And then there would be some bad guy, and they would shoot, out, pizza and they'd shoot out of this mad building, and they would be like samurai, samurai pizza cats. Look at that. I think even... it looks epic. I've not seen it. It's proper like Japanese anime type fucking yeah. 80s cartoon. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Thing is though, he didn't have te- he didn't have a TV. He's got proper humble beginnings. He didn't have so a telly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was a kid. So you went, you well, you did that because because Paris had this big drive at the time, didn't they, of bringing in ex sportsmen? So so I I spent four or five years at Samurai when I started playing rugby mm. and during playing rugby, and they made bespoke teamwear, right? Bespoke mm. rugby kit. So it was great for me. I'd go in swapping war stories of playing for England with rugby clubs. It was easy, right? And then became sort of one of their top salespeople. And then I was kind of like, oh, I can't be 60. Came around rugby clubs going, I remember when I was 16, 17, I played rugby for England. <laughs> they were like, get lost, you 60 year old yeah, with yeah. a bad back. And what school did you go to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't Millfield, I can tell yeah. you that much. Um, and then um, I went to Michael Page and said, look, you know, I'm looking for a new job. I think sales is right for me. I love it. Going out, interacting face to face with people. And, you know, this, this is an amazing story, this. And I love this. So I went to see. Um, AJ Lu- Louise Shepherd actually in, oh, in Leicester, Shepherd. and she's still oh, there. She's yeah, still man- okay. she's still managing us. Amazing, right? She's really. She thought that was doing practice in the end. Uh, yeah, um, bring up Louise Shepherd th- on LinkedIn. I think, LinkedIn, I think so. She's now. I think she's Paige Exec, right? Louise right. Shepherd. But she was um, she was she was brilliant. Right? She was a great manager, and I I went in, and I said I'm looking for a job. Uh, something in sales, you know, be great. She went, have you ever thought about recruitment? Like, you're having a laugh, aren't you? Do comma Michael Page and that all thing. Um, there she's there. So she's partner at Page Tech. Yeah. So first one in. Oh, there you go. Top one there. There you go. There it is. Yeah, I do remember it. Yeah. Okay. No. no, no, not that one. No. Just to go back. That's Georgina. One below her. There you go. There she is. Tr- oh, Tristan's yeah. out of Jamie, but she was in base semester. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, that. yeah. So she, she was uh, lovely. She interviewed me, and she was like, "Have you talked about?" Recruitment. I said, no, I haven't really. Um, but I've not heard the best things about recruitment. Sharky industry. Everyone's no one ever has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're but, the window sales of the BDB world, don't they? Yeah. That, that's basically what we looked at. And, and, and she, she goes, well, no, I think you'd be really good. We love competitive sports people here. We've got a lot of rugby players and stuff. Yeah, and I was like, okay, big drive, structured training. So I interviewed with her. And literally, I think within an hour of finishing, Sean Rogerson and Steve White. Had Sean in. Rogerson. So Sean was her director and Steve mm. was the MD. And she went, look, I know this seems a bit weird, but Sean's here, who is my boss. Do you want to meet him? I was like, yeah, okay, great. So I did my second interview on the first day. Mm-hmm. And I said to my wife, I'll be back in about an hour. Right? Spent four hours there because every fucking couple of pages goes. Seven yeah. hours. Fuck. Seven hours. In went so in, weird. Sean comes in it's and he interviews thing. and he goes, you know, great. And he goes, look, I like you. I think the next stage would be come and do a role play. Uh, I want you to come in and present uh, a role to me and give me it's a like, pitch and stuff. You should and I was like, dinner first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I stuck my penny on. Yeah. <laughs> my G-string. And, um, somebody so I, so I ended up a going... fireman. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I ended, I ended up going over to the, I think it was like a Sainsbury's on the other side of the road or something in Leicester. And they went, go over there, half an hour, came back, presented, did the role play. And then they went, do you want to meet Steve White? He's the MD, he's here. It's ultimately his decision. And I was like, yeah, met him. So what the fuck was all of this about? Yeah, the, well, I've already committed said, fucking four hours here. I may as well just fucking do the rest, right? He said, look, pull your skirt back up, would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Go back to Sainsbury's, buy another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know if I'm ready yet. Yeah. <laughs> just finish for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah, a so half an hour reload time. It's like seven hours. <laughs> and I ended up walking out of there going, yeah, great. Oh, that's a job. Yeah. That was it. And well, look, yeah, again, seven hours in one day worth of interviewing, but, or would you rather have gone back three times? Or, or seven times. Fucking seven times in his case. Yeah. Like, it, yeah, but yeah. Difference between closes there, isn't it? That's the difference. <laughs> Say what you will, mate. I fucking travelled the fucking country. And yeah, like, yeah. In the end, it wasn't until but, I said, like, what the fuck do I need to do? Yeah. <laughs> but Michael Page were very structured in terms yeah. of their training. So you started, you didn't touch a phone. You know, you would listen to somebody, you'd sit, go through CVs, you would job write, you know, write, write job specs, you'd put them online, you'd sift through them, you'd then do role play. And I was thinking, like, role play, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, why are we need to do this? But I still now role play more guys, face to face, over teams, okay. over the phone. That's and what I feel we like don't that, do as much that structure. Well, we used to, though. Yeah. That structure that they gave, gave you to a sales process, like open questions, open questions, leading questions, mm-hmm. yeah, and then identifying buying signals and and then selling back. And a great example of this is that we had a guy, we were chatting with an NHL team, St. Louis Blues, the other day, and I said to one of our sales guys, right, you know, you've sent out a, a, a platform, white label, so he's bought into it. Before you go into, hey, we're endurance zone, this is all, this is everything we do, find out why he's come back to you. Yeah. You know, what was it in your email that made you go, oh, I'm interested in this? So I said, just find out, you know, what are they doing? What are they doing around fan engagement, loyalty, rewards? And I said, yeah, right. So uh, they hi, this is Dave. He's going to be silent. He's the founder. So I think, yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And he goes, right, so let me tell you everything about Endurance Zone. And he goes, straight and I said, I had to stop him and go, hold on, hold on. Right. Yeah, Andy. Yeah, he, he's still new, but let me just, I mean, he's been here in like nine months. He's new. Yeah, 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 still yeah. new. Fucking yeah. get it. Fuck's sake. Hopefully they didn't check him out on LinkedIn, but like, yeah, listen, yeah. you got to forgive him. He's, uh, yeah, but, he's but, but what we was, call blowing was, his beans. Was, yeah, exactly. But it's a natural thing of sales people, right? Yeah. If you're a confident person right. that's done some form of sales, you will. She's trying, he's trying to find Andy now, isn't he? <laughs> and um, what you're doing... Bean blower. It's Look Chris. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Chris. Chris. Sort it out, mate. Like, Chris. We're fucking rooting for you here. Yeah. It wasn't Chris. Um, <laughs> yeah. Train you guys, Chris. But yeah, it turned out, though. He was like, well, look, this is actually everything that we've been looking for. We have this fan engagement app. We've tried to do our own rewards. And actually, what he went through is he was like, look, we've got 20, 25 partners locally that we charge monthly to mm. offer rewards, but we don't know how to house them. We're taking their money, but they're not getting any value. So all of a sudden, you're like, "Well, I've got a platform that will allow you to do that, and you can have the value, right?" Who so, are these and then, stupid 25 companies that just pay? Money to yeah, like it's, it's, it's an NHL team, and this is America. Fuck's you sake. know, it's like I'll throw five grand at you if I yeah. can be part of the team. You know, um, but by the end of it, it was like check, check. It was like right. So you said you wanted to add in your own rewards. Great, our platform allows you to do that. You said that you wanted to give them higher visibility. Brilliant. This banner slot allows you to do that. You said that you want to be able to turn brands on, rotate the rank rate. This does it. And all of a sudden you get to the end of it, right? And you're like, you can't say no because I've just sold you everything you just told me you wanted. The same way that Paige taught us to go, you told told me that you want a candidate that can do X, Y, and Z. You You said also that this was important to you. You finally mentioned that this is the reasons that you've struggled so, so far. I, me and Nick were talking about this the other day. Right? And I, business training. I, literally, literally, and that's I'll it. I'll go back right? to yeah, so my, really first, my first CV presentation that I had to do, right? You and Emily did the um, yeah. did the role play, do you remember? Yeah, I do remember that. And actually. it was yeah, yeah, it yeah. was a role play it was a role play based on a CV prize with Juicens. Oh good Big Juicens. Juicens, right? And um, I don't know if you remember Gary Horn at Juicens. I do, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, it was with Gary, Gary you like, that. kicked your ass. He, well, it was <laughs> me. Bad. It was me. <laughs> and fucking, who was that? Who was that girl from MP? Jen something, right? Yeah. Do you remember her, the one with the glasses? She used to be Michael Page. That narrows it down over 2,000 yeah. employees. <laughs> yeah, but she was got an hour fucking yeah, passing, yeah. didn't that, she? That, that one with the glasses. Uh, Jen. Jen something, yeah. She ended up going back to like school. She used to play hockey. She used to play hockey and like, um, Long blonde hair, glasses. Anyway, so it was me and her that we were supposed to go on there, right? And I, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm, yeah, I'm already mean, an experienced salesperson, right? So very can, forgettable. But she was like really a nice enough girl, but like just forgettable. Just had the personality. Some of, some of the people there had such big no, personalities. No comment, Jen. 
Yeah. Had the personality of a fucking door handle. With the glasses. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But, but so I, at this point, I'm an experienced salesperson. So I've been in door like handle. banking, I've been in, in financial services, I've been in, in, in the motor trade and all that sort of stuff. So I, I, like, I, can, I can read people, right? We go in there and we do the uh, we do the CV press with with Nitin and, uh, and Emily. And Emily's like tearing it all apart. I'm like, fuck, fuck, I need to know my shit. So I knew everything I needed to know about the candidates. Go and meet Jen over there and we go in to, to see Gary Horn. And he's like, Right, I told you in the brief, bear in mind, he hasn't told me, he's told Jen. He's like, I told you in the brief, I want Red Brick Uni, um, first time passes, I want fucking come out of practice or whatever his criteria was. And I was like, okay, I didn't know that's all in my camera, that's a fucking grit off here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not presenting anything, yeah. yeah. Jen, you're Someone from community college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mate, honestly, yeah, but... Yeah. She, she then asked the question of, oh, well, who are your competitors? And the minute she said that, I was fucking head down. I was like, fuck's sake. Like, even if this guy wasn't an arsehole, right? That's a shit question to ask. Yeah, that's, a nice, say, you, that's a nice open door. Business. Yeah, of course you have. You've you got you... the FD of a FTSE listed business. You're going to be like, who are Who's your competitors? competitor? Educate right? me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I haven't done any I'm, research. I'm s- I need you to educate me. Like, yeah. And I'm sat there and I'm like, fuck, okay. And it was because of sales experience I got around it. But actually, more importantly, because of the role play that I did beforehand, where I kind of, Again, I go back to that military training, right? Mm. In, in the army, you do repetition, repetition, repetition. You get good at it. So instinctively, you know what to do. You know what yeah. to say. And that's what Paige was doing. It was all repetition. So by the time I got to the point where I was like, right, you're, you're not happy with what it is that we need to do. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you that I was listening to what you've been saying, which is you want Red Brick Uni. You want first-time qualifications. You want somebody who's come from the industry. You want somebody who can X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. Now I know what you're after. Look, appreciate we haven't, we haven't performed well here today. But I have an understanding of what you want now. And let me let me fill the job for you. And that used to be what used to get the buy in. Yeah. Compared to going in there, but yeah, I know what you're saying, but still see my candidate. Let me try and flog you, Sheila. Yeah. 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 And this is the thing. But like our, our best hires have been the ones that we role played. I had, this, I had this guy, Liam, Liam Sant, really, really good guy. He left us to go work with his mate um, over at Trainio. And Trainio, like a proper SDR, fucking full, full sales business. And I said to Liam, because one of our biggest challenges in recruitment is always getting past gatekeepers, right? So right. I said to him, I was like, right. It's I like- a fun bet. Yeah, of course it is. And I was like, I like you, right? But I want to see you as a salesperson. So get past my gatekeeper. Get on the phone to me. And if you can get on the phone to me, you're through to the next stage. If you can't, it's not my problem, bro. And fair play to him. He tried like six oh, times. Bastard. Yeah. I, like, yeah, yeah. We, just, we, had, we had a girl that worked here, Christine. Like, she was a bitch to him. Man. She, like, every time she picked up the phone, she was like, like, yeah, by about the fifth full call, it was like, look, Christine, it's, it's Lil. I need you to put me through to Sean because like, I want this job. I like, really I want just... this job. And she was like, no, sorry, he's in a meeting and put, put the phone down. Yeah, it's like fucking. Paul Bassett was working his ass off to get yeah. this. Yeah, and you know what? The but, he first, kept, but he kept calling back though. But he kept, he and this is the thing. Back. And yeah. this is why, for me, he was one of our best hires because he was just so fucking persistent. He got to the point where once he'd started, he was like, "I was going to lie. I was going to just like full on just fucking bullshit." He goes, "I didn't know what you wanted." Half of the time, I was actually on the phone, so I was busy, right? Yeah. But the other half of the time, she could have put in fruit, but she just chose not to. Mm. But it was, <laughs> it was a persistence piece that really got to me because I was like, fucking hell. Do you know? And, and to the point where I was like, I'm going to call this guy back because actually, he's been so persistent. I feel bad, you feel bad having to reject him as, as yeah. many times but as you that. Do, you do. I think having been in sales, you understand um, when someone's trying, when they're offering value. And I, I get I mean, Christ. You should have a CEO title on your, on your LinkedIn everybody starts firing LinkedIn messages at you, know, whether it's yeah. pay-per-click or it's recruit. I get so many things. Everyone wants to sell your shit. The, everyone wants to sell your shit. The amount everyone of fucking accounting practice you have got one that comes through and you're like, it's the well, ones like that. that come through yeah. and they say, look, I know this probably isn't relevant for you now. Um, I've seen that you're a startup. Not sure what quite size looks like you've got. And they've done the reason. I think you've got 14, 15 employees. Look, when you're ready, so it was, this was specifically somebody from FX, right? And we are looking at, you know, setting up accounts in different countries now. So, Mm -hmm. you know, setting up FX. And um, it came in and saying, I know this isn't going to be relevant for you now, but I want to put myself on your radar so that when it is relevant, you know who I am, what I do, etc. Yeah, if you've got five minutes, love to have a chat with you, even if it's just about information gathering about mm-hmm. when you're ready. And I was like, touch. Yeah. Nice touch. Yeah. So yeah. I rang him and then we had, a, I think, about a 20 minute meeting. And he was right. I said, Look, this isn't right for us now, but do send me some information. It's just before I hired Tom. And I was like, well, we have got a finance director starting in a couple of months and I'll make sure that he has this. Yeah. And now we're in a position where it's like, actually, we will be looking at this. 
And he will be the first person I go back to. Again. Yeah, of course. And you Tom, know, Tom will ring him six months ago. Uh, and Tom will ring him because we t- we tell all our guys this. And for any kind of recruiters and stuff listening, or out salespeople, there, or salespeople, yeah. if you're specking, if you're shooting a uh, your shot, specking, right? Go to the top because shit <sighs> falls down, right? If a CEO of a business tells the p- ne- person below him or her to get in touch with this person because this person has reached out to me and I haven't got time to deal with it, but sounds like what he's saying yeah. makes sense. That person will reach out to you. If you go to that person directly, they will play God. They will play like arsehole, not interested, don't need you, blah, blah, blah. Always shoot for the top. And just remember that. You know, shit falls down, not up. Man, I've, got such if, a, I've got such a good story about that. You know that. what I mean though, right? Good. Yeah. Good. Go on, go on. I've got such a good story about this. So I, like, I can't... Oh, I can't... I can't like Newton's pissed. I can't... Maybe no, get some water for fuck's sake. Oh, He's doing it again. No, no, no it's 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 the, uh, the last one. I can't you name who it is. I'm slipping out my In hand. case they watch this. They probably won't watch this because it's not in the YouTube. No, they, they won't. No, nobody watches this. This I is can't name purely for our entertainment. But we went and, and met uh, the head of marketing um, talking about their engagement. It's governing body. And right. she was like, um, well, we do our own rewards. And I was like, you do. <laughs> not very they're not, well. They're not as good as ours. And she was like, yeah, but every reward that we've got is exclusive. And I was like, well, the five that you've got there, we also have them, but are not better. And rather than be like, oh, okay, um, okay, right, well, how, how do you do that? Because the way that we negotiate discounts is as we onboard a client, we onboard a client that has 100,000, 400,000, a million members. So all of a sudden our membership grows, like mm, yeah, incrementing yeah. massively, right? And we use the power of that to then negotiate bigger distance. How many members have you got? Three million. We've now got 10. Right? I want a bigger discount, etc. And... Um, she wants to bring some drinks Sorry. in. Go on, go on. Just go, go on. for it. Just go on. Serve us all. Say, say hi to the camera as well while you're here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks, BB. Thanks, uh, Brewdog. Brewdog, sponsoring our episode today. James Watson, yeah, whenever yeah. you're ready, make you just We'd like to interrupt this story for a quick right. message from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> commercial partners. <laughs> Brewdog. Yeah. But James anyway, Watson, so chat, recruitment agency. Chat to this woman. <laughs> she was like, no. But instead of saying like, oh, that's amazing. She was like, well, I don't understand how you've got those because um, we, the, those partners are exclusive to us. Because she's been lied to. And I was really honest with her. I was like, <laughs> well, A, nobody will give you an exclusive discount. And I was like, B, you've got 100,000 100, members and we've got 2 million. So we're going to get a bigger discount. Yeah. She's really shady. But it was a, a governing body. We were like, we know we can add value to you. So we went straight to the CEO who said, I mean, literally email in and went, actually, this is something that we really need to be paying attention to and it's something that we've tasked our marketing team with looking at. I was like, just met your marketing director a week ago. Mm-hmm. She, yeah. So we went and met him for I a coffee. I can tell you exactly why it's not working. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you why it's not working. <laughs> went and met him, had a, co- had a coffee with him and the next thing we know, we had this massive team call with the whole team and she was on it and she didn't say a word. She sat there. Of course there, she didn't. And he was like, right guys, I just want to introduce you to these guys at Endurance Zone. I've, I've seen the product. I've met Dave. Um, we 100% need to implement this. This is really just a meeting about yeah. how do we make this yeah, th- yeah, this isn't a have a chat, let me know have what you think. Chat. This, this is, is a, we're doing this. This is happening. Get on board with it and fucking yeah. do your job. Yeah. She left two weeks later. Really? Yeah. I'd That's like to all think down it was to you. me. I'd like to think and it was She me. can't feed her kids because of you. <laughs> no, she went somewhere. <laughs> you know, the irony is she went to another governing body we already supply. Well, perfect. <laughs> She's yeah, 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 even yeah. better. She's going yeah. away. Yeah, she can't get away. Yeah, but but that that that's happened to us in in the recruitment world as well. It's like we we've got a we've got a really substantial client who, at the time, I just sent a CV over to to um, the CEO, weren't it? It was a CEO that I sent it to at the time. He then passed it on to the CFO. CFO was like, "Yeah, I'm really interested." But before that, me and him have been fucking calling the internal recruitment team nonstop, just be like, "Look, guys, we can support, we can add value, yeah, 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 yeah. we can do this for you." And they were like, "No, no, no, not interested, not interested." CFO interviews a candidate. Candidate ends up getting the job. And then the recruitment team come in, tail between the legs, was like, guys, we need to negotiate rates. No. No chance. No. Yeah, we were like, yeah, our, yeah, our rates are yeah, yeah, quite yeah. clear. We do need to negotiate rates, yeah. Your oh. uh, payment terms, what are they? Because ours are seven days. And like, yeah, I mean. Well, you know, ours are 30 days. Well, that's not going to work for us, is it? You've already hired our candidate. Yeah, they've so. offered, the contract's gone out, everything's yeah. done, right? We're, we're at 30%. This You're is negotiating's out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is, this is we tried 85... to play your game. We tried to do it your way yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And but this is exactly what I said to us. Yeah, like, this the is internal recruiting client, thing. I'd love like... to get a senior internal recruiter on the podcast. Then, and I've approached a fair few of them. They don't They're all very Speak reluctant. to Ray Harris. Who? Ray Harris. Ray so, Harris. Bring him up, Tristan. Tristan. So yeah, Ray, so... Ray Harris works at uh, GT um, Internal. Mm. and. We've got a GT in the past, haven't we? We have, yeah. They don't like us. 
Pretty much for it. Tax audit advisory at. Okay. GT still. You still Grant Thornton? Go down a little bit, please, mate. He's currently. Oh no, he's gone on his own. Oh, okay. He's oh, he's cop race as well. Fucking hell. Get him in tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Monday, maybe. Tomorrow, Saturday. Yeah, so you'll see there he's done he's done a load of like internal well, oh, he's done yeah now, see that would that, that, be, that'd be interesting because yeah. because like the, the reality is like internal seems to just absolutely hate agency. Right? It's because they have a they they have a budget right. They've got they've got hires. Not, not they've got X amount of hires, and all you're doing is every time they go out to an agency, it shows their shit. And they're, they're, it's they're only the ones that work about... with agencies. So who, the, those that have come from an agency background, they're the ones that don't like using agencies because they're the ones that are like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, but usually they'll have, got, they've have gone in and sold themselves. They've had a I'll save you a boatload like, of money. Uh, like, but this take, particular... Yeah, but also, I mean, take Dave. Dave X agency. Would you use a recruitment agency now to do your recruitment? He doesn't need to though, right? Absolutely not. Exactly. Yeah, if those who no, have been no, through no, no. the the recruitment no, no, industry the, themselves the, are like, do you know, I know what you lot are about. Okay, no, so thank I'll, you. I'll caveat <laughs> that. So there, there is. I think the thing is, I would use a recruitment agency. It's nothing to do with. I mean, when I went to hire Tom, for instance, a finance director, I was a finance recruiter that knew what I was looking for. Right. Right. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't need help so with that. Right. What we'll, I will probably use an agency for is as we start hiring sales staff in the US. Um, and advertising sales staff in the US, mm-hmm. we will use an agency for that because and that's a market you're unfamiliar with. One hundred percent, it makes sense. You to can see what good looks like. You can interview somebody, mm. and you know, having come from the background, what what does good look like? You know, you get them to put together a business plan. We did that with a guy we interviewed for a VP role in the states. Got him to put together a sixty day business plan. They absolutely nailed it. You know, and we referenced the hell out of him. But it's because he was referred sales, to us. Sales and advertising division in the US, aren't we? Yeah, we've got yeah, we've got a sales and advertising yeah. division in the US. There's a smirk on both your faces, so I, I kind of want to know what's. Uh... There's um, I saw this earlier. I wanted to point this out to you. It's a an outsourced IT I've company. I've got forty five day payment terms, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, That's got, what we can do with that. We got credit check. There's no seven years. You got past the credit check. We invoice finance, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tom, you Tom pay. You that. take as long as you want to pay. Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that anymore. How bad is that? No, no, no. This okay. So knitting doesn't do any of the business admin stuff, right? Everything finance, everything so admin. You're, you're the brain, she's the face. Basically, yeah. No, we got the hair, baby. No, oh, Nitin does, yeah. does all the tech oh, stuff, right? Where is it? Yeah. So yeah. Nitin does. <laughs> where is it? I ask it's myself. Gone, often, <laughs> I ask myself <laughs> often that same question: yeah. Where has it gone? Anything, anything, anything sort of marketing, creative, all that sort of shit. Nitin does that because I'm, I'm fucking wank with all that sort of stuff. But business admin, finance, all that sort of shit. That, that's what I have to do, right? And. He's like, yeah, 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 it's invoice finance. Don't worry about it. He's like, no, 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 that's not how invoice finance works, dear. Yeah, we look, still have to get paid to go shit. Like, it got to a point where, and, and you'll know this, when you're kind of early stage startup and blah, 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 and you haven't got outside investors or you haven't gone around yeah. for seed funding and stuff, you know, cash flow kind of does a lot of this, right? Yeah. It would keep me up at night. Like, I, I, it would literally keep me up at night. I'd be like fretting. I've got this weird compulsion in me. I'd be walking around my living room like, what the fuck are we going to do? Blah, blah, blah. And I'd come in the next day and I'd be an absolute arsehole to the staff. It ain't their fault. It ain't their fault. He, used, be to, like, but he be, used to be like that when it was just me and him as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, and eventually I had, to say to, I had to say to Sean, I was like, listen, I've, 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 I've got rid of the online banking. Um, I don't want to know. I trust you. You need to look after the banking. I can't do it. Because every time I look at the bank balance and it's slightly lower than what I expect it to be, and my expectations are up here, right? I freak out. I freak out and then I'm an arsehole to the team. And then and they know me as the, the nice, laughy, jokey, happy guy. And when I'm an arsehole, they're like, something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, I oh, know, it's weird, right? But Wait, like, the dynamic, right, upstairs. They're, they're scared all, of him. They, they, they love me. I'm one, of, I'm one of them. They hate him. They're like, yeah, no. Oh, Sean, I hate that. You can't swear on the phone. Yeah, like, and they'll look at me and be like, well, Nitin does it. And I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, like, you don't want to piss Sean off. I'm like, why? Like, where does this come from? But what what you've just said there is really interesting because um, that's that's it's hard to do that. But what you've identified is is what you're not good at. Yeah, right. And as a business owner, you have a tendency to uh, describe it as being an octopus. Right? You want you want your tentacles in every. Yeah, you want to need to and want to do everything. Yeah. And when you're when you're you know small startup, one, two, three, you've got to be everything. Um, but then you got to be cool. You got to be cool as a cucumber, 
And like I can tell you now, going through funding rounds and managing mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. when do you go for a funding round? Have you got enough cash in the in the bank that you're not bending over and somebody comes in and goes, Oh, you really need cash. Mm-hmm. You want to yeah. go out at the right <laughs> time where they go, Well, you don't really need cash. You're like, Yeah, I know, but we want to accelerate growth, right? Yeah. So it's a real balancing act. But move, the hardest bit that I found is from somebody that is wants to sell, sell, sell and be involved, and I'm super detailed on everything is leaving other people to make those decisions and you've got to leave them to do it. But what you've done is identified that that stresses you out and you're going to be an arsehole to your staff. Yeah. So yeah, you step yeah, yeah. away from it. Well, that's let, what it was. Let, it was literally, a, I'm not good at this. I can't do this. Yeah. It's the same with the people management stuff, right? Like I, I, like Sean, Sean looks after the, 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 the kind of the one-to-ones and the people management stuff because he's better at it. Because for me, I, I, I'm the person that's kind of like, yeah, that's no, fine, that's no, fine, that's no, fine. He did what? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, I'm going to boot him in the head. Like ring HR, how bad would it be? Like you know, this is a this what, is am, a am genuine I, question. Am right? I talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm this like, is a genuine question. Like, just, like, just, you know, how much trouble? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How I, much trouble I, would I, I get? Just to? give this guy a little in the head. <laughs> Are we talking like a thousand pound fine, making go away, or is this like a you're going to do time? Because I need to know. Uh, These are genuine just, questions I have to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, but this on is on the a... other side of it. I also am the, the 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 guy that makes all of this happen. I was like, all right, we're doing a podcast. Is it what hidden oh, TVs right. behind plastic? Basically, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. so what will happen is right. But, <laughs> so the way our dynamic is, it's really weird, right? Because <laughs> like, to get a level scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, this is all going to fade away. How do we get him to say something? Boom in the head. <laughs> yeah. No, but what happens is Nitin will come up with these like big ideas right he's like right i've got this idea this is what we're gonna do and he's like right okay no worries then he'll like, he'll start it and then he'll just leave it and then i'm like all right so do i need to like what, what are we doing with this oh yeah, yeah, yeah we'll sort it out and then it's like okay yeah. it's my adhd i'm sorting this out then i know so and then i have to do the detail of it all and then he'll do it again it's like oh, okay, it's another idea it's like okay yeah, cool cool what we're we doing this okay no worries. he'll go through it but, 10 20 percent of the way and he's like right okay well no in fairness to me though we now have tristan who i also give my weird ideas to and and he just makes it happen like the AI job builder or the AI blog writer, where I'm just like, Check hey, I'm out. thinking this. You'd love this. Tristan, pull up the, uh, the the job ad builder. Yeah, so when you are looking for your sales stuff, for example, if you go over to rectools.io, which is a free-to-use website for all, anybody and everybody. Free for now, unless you want to make some real money. Yeah, no, nah, don't worry about well, it. We'll spend gonna, someone else's money. In yeah, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna create another one. We're going to call it um, Rec Sports Zone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> And then you ask it to go. Many have hey, tried. Write me a, yeah. So Tristan, <laughs> if you put in like, what, write me what a job spec for, now? for. What are you looking for now? What are you recruiting for? Oh, it's called sales manager. Okay. okay. Write me a write job me spec sales for a sales manager. manager in the US market, specializing in sports sales, or sports benefits. Or um, no, put it in the in the tech space, right? Sure. Sales manager in the US market uh, within a SaaS product. Yeah. Um, within SaaS is probably the within SaaS. Just leave it at SaaS, yeah. Within SaaS. Within SaaS, yeah. That's it. No. So is this like chat GPT? Uh, yeah. So what this will do? So it's this better what because what what so it's built on Chat GPT. But what we've done in the background is really kind of fine tune it so that it stays within a kind of recruitment mindset and puts together things that are, you know, sort of, so the job advert builder, for example, yep. is intentionally creative and engaging and aimed at trying to find the best candidates, that kind of thing, grab people's attention and so on and so forth. So now you can amend that, right? And you could say something along the lines of, right, include in that. So what, what do you want to include in it? Put sports. So include so the sports put, sector. So it includes somebody within sports sector, yeah. Plug your laptop in, Tristan, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Poor guy, man. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do now. You're confused. Him. Is that, am, I, am I plugging in? Am I, am I typing? But yeah, no, it's re- it's a really cool piece of kit for it. the whole idea behind like, it. Yeah, is, actually, 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 um, like, it's good, isn't it? No, yeah. genuinely. You know, the whole idea behind it is, right, especially the, the, the saw, blog I, writer I, I and the... I can the shit out of this. <laughs> Mate, yeah, honestly, this is cool. And it's free. It genuinely, right, and you notice there's no login, there's no nothing. All it is is a look, this text out there, use it. Let's let's uh, let's make what, what data yeah, but, did you get from it? Uh, including nothing. Um, genuinely sport. nothing. You're not logging in at uh, any point. The only well, time you have so, to log in is when you want to leave a review. Can, but can for you a see can you product. see even you, you maybe somebody doesn't create no, an account? No, we can't can see, see any any what, anything of what they've searched right, for, what they've asked for. Let me tell you a business that's that could be something good for this, right? So if you've got, have you had a Zoom info? Do you know Zoom? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So here's something for you. If you have a free account with Zoom, Zoom sell your data. 
Yeah, of course they do, yeah. yeah. I buy that data because what it does is you spend a certain amount of money and anybody that has met, that has discussed anything, and you put in keywords like, so rewards, mm. fan loyalty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sports rewards, engagement, whatever, it will ping us and say, um, so for instance, we knew, which is how we started talking to him, the NBA had a meeting with five people in the US talking about fan loyalty platform. Interesting. And it gave us first name, last name, email, and phone number of those people. Mm-hmm. And then all we did is we white labeled our platform and went, hey, not sure if you're looking or on the market at the moment for a fan engagement loyalty yeah, platform. Okay. But which is what we do. In the same way that a recruitment business would message a FD knowing that their finance manager is So just if you've got people and, using yeah. this that go, we're looking for a sales manager in the, in the US that's within the sports sector, right? And I've had to log in and create an account or whatever. Um, you then could, I say, but you then could spec from a, hey, not sure if you're looking, mm-hmm. but here's a, Sales no, we, we completely get that, and and we, we're not we're not there yet. So where, the, where the we're reason at, the, the reason we're not doing that is uh, at the minute is because recruiters don't like buying from recruiters. Recruiters don't trust recruiters, and we found that very early on when we launched Rectals. And so we've got to. One make of the common it, questions was, but where are you getting money? Like, yeah, where are you, you making money? You don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why. A, why are you doing this? Oh, and B, exactly. like, where are you making money? Right. You're not taking the commission from his brand. Yeah, where are you no, making money? Yeah. yeah. Don't worry yeah. about that. Well, don't, that's yeah. that's, that's your problem. Your business yeah. is my business. You yeah. let me handle the so monetization where, of it, and you, you guys take the product. Well, this right? is, so where we're at the minute is we're we're in a situation where we're we're fortunate that Marcus Sharma Group can fund all of this. Right. The whole idea behind the Rectals project is just be better. Right, the recruitment industry needs to be better. It needs to be better at what we do, better at the value proposition that we offer to our client base and our customer base, and that's both candidates and clients. But more importantly, just be better at what you do. Right, (laughs) write better job adverts, attract better talent. You know, like put more put blogs out there that actually mean something rather than same training the same. Equally, we understand it's not as easy, right? Because when it was just us two, we we started RecSmarts fucking years ago, right? And RecSmarts was literally just. Blogs that we would write about the recruitment industry, trying mm. to break down fourth wall stuff, just showing our client base and our candidate base what it is, the, the challenges that we face and how we can help, right? Yeah. But we get to a point where it's like, fucking hell, like for us to write these articles, it took like 45 minutes to an hour. And when it's a two-man recruitment business and you've got 10, 11 jobs on each, yeah. it's just fucking near enough impossible. And there's the finished article there that Tristan's been tinkering around with. It's about a last sentence. It's time to hit home run. That's because it's aimed at the US recruitment, <laughs> the US market. They're like, wow. this means more to people in the US. The US is a uh, national sport. <laughs> yeah, you know you can, you, uh, arguably, you could even include in there. So you could put in there, include include the salary, which will be, call it 50K, yeah. um, location. Uh, He's like, oh, hang, on, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> you won't get anyone for 50. So no, but yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you something. This is all that we figured out in the US, right? So we, we had a, a woman who... Uh, was interning with us from Boulder University mm. and she came straight out of university and jumped into a $150,000 salary. Because you know why? Because they pay 30% tax, then they pay state tax, mm. then they pay land tax. If you live in Maryland, you then pay rain tax. Rain? rain tax. As in like rain weather? Tax. Rain. So yeah, Todd, uh, my business partner lives in just outside Baltimore. If it rains, your tax is higher that month because it means that the roads need more maintenance and people need to come out. Fuck, wait till Richie Sunak cares about this. Fuck, you know. <laughs> He's going to put in fucking like below 10 degree what, tax. This is what I mean. But then they also have to pay their health care, their own health care yeah. and stuff like that. So, this all, is so all of a sudden, yeah, you know, 150k yeah. salary is probably the equivalent of us. Somebody over here only 60. Yeah. So they take half of it straight away. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, so with that, you could just like tap in, like add salary, add location, add fucking whatever, whatever, whatever. And it'll just spit it all up here. And it's been it's been coded in such a way that it's designed to be not a standard. You know how they just fucking paste the job description on a fucking on another. Th- yeah. Three key things have been gone into the, the the back end. So yes, it's built on ChatGPT or OpenAI, right? But the, in the back end, uh, we've had to kind of manually program in the instructions. And the first thing is you've got to make it creative and engaging. You have mm-hmm. to. It's not. Don't just list me a load of shit. Yeah. Well, make it different to what you consider to be a normal job spec. And then fo- the final thing is. Um, don't kind of the, the the plagiarism piece basically don't repeat so whatever you spit out for me now don't ever repeat this again like make it unique to me as a user because the last thing you want is over sort of 10 years of people using chat gbt everybody gets the same old shit all the time because that's yeah. no different to what recruiters are doing now right yeah do you remember when we used to go when we were at page and they'd be like 
got a purchase ledger vacancy and there'd be that word document and it's just a generic purchase ledger document uh, like job spec and you put that out and you go oh i'm looking for this again yeah this time it's in warwick like you know um so yeah the the idea behind it is it's it's just better yeah (laughs) tell him yeah 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 yeah, 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 warwick so but yeah that's that's the idea behind it and and what we want is people using it as in like and right now so the 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 blog writer and the the job ad builder are two of the best performing elements of our site that's where most people seem to be going at the minute so there's clearly demand out there for it and as i said we haven't monetized it and we don't plan to monetize it anytime soon because it's about making the industry better you know same thing with you right you start off with this vision and this idea of there's a gap in the market here. Something needs to be done about it. I'll make the money later. Mm. And I will make the money later. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But until we get to later, I've still got to fix the problem. Well, we gave it away for free to start with. Just see who was using it. Use that feedback. This discount's not big enough. Find you. Make on, it bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Consumer journeys are great. Yeah, you know, when I look at our version one, you go, oh, yeah, cringe, yeah, isn't it? When I, I saw bet. version one, I was like, this is shit out. <laughs> what did we do? Yeah. And yeah. now version two, I'm like, woo. <laughs> like Netflix you even do, then like version 3 you're like come on version 2 is going to be so dated yeah, yeah you do that with emails and shit like that I've, I've, every now and again I've tried to find an email yeah, and I, I see an email old, from old like, email, two three years ago like, what the fuck was I on about I don't know have you looked at your signatures so I look yes. at our signatures yes. from like version yes. 1 yeah. 2 3 and you're like oh god yeah some of it's, it's embarrassing isn't it yeah well look that's going to be on our signature next we're going to have them on there seriously I want those up in my living room absolutely it's yeah. scary they're, do you know what we should do right oh, cool. like yeah, yeah. I, I think what we should do is anyone that comes in as a guest right we should make them one of them you should do and then put them on and then put them on a wall yeah, yeah we'll have like really a little cool. wall of uh, yeah, wall of offices yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go this is how this we got packet ideas this is why I look after the marketing stuff though, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 say, we call them squirrel, we call them squirrel ideas right? Squirrel, we, we okay. always have them where you're like oh it'd be amazing if the platform did this and this and this right and we said like we're not, we're not there yet but it's a squirrel idea but then we've had several of those squirrel ideas. You go, God, now we built that bit. This bit really cool. works with that. Yeah. Right? So well, no job, ideas about yeah, idea. On, on Red Tools, jo- job ad builder and blog writer was literally a shower thought. And I'll rank him on the way into work going, man, I've got a wicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, as I was conditioning Comes in the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in with like the towel wrapped around his head. It's like, sure, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why are you no, uh, so literally just naked? <laughs> so I know. Why are you not? <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and it literally just say, "Hey, I've thought about this. What do you think of this?" And sit down with Tristan. What is this possible? Can we do this? And he's gone. Yeah, I think I can. Before, work before you came, yeah, yeah. we were literally down here just shooting a bit of pool, just because we we got another idea that we're that we're working on. And one of the things that works really well, and you'll have it with your business partners and stuff like that, is like you you value and respect their opinion because it's like right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, and you're gonna find the pitfalls in it, and I'm gonna trust you to find the pitfalls in it. And if you don't, then we're possibly on something here. Yeah. Because we should be able to yeah, work through it. Yeah. And if there is any pitfalls in it, is that workable? Is there a workaround? Yeah. We, we, do, we, do, we do an idea session quite often, actually, where we just sit in a room with a board and a pen and just throw ideas. A lot of people how, don't how do we, that. They we, get so bogged yeah. down in the day-to-day. They just don't. And they but, just but it's want hard, to get out though. at the end of the day. You know it, I mean? it, it's hard to actually find the time. And it's like, I, I'd say the, the thing I struggle with the most at the moment is like finding time to exercise, right? Because I'm all over the place. But you've got to find the time to do it and those ideas things is you can become standard and just run this guy trailer, in the fitness industry telling us we've got a time fine to exercise yeah. you've got to so, see what you will mate. me and my son have been getting up at 5.30 in the morning going running so I'm saying I'm going to smoke a cigar in about two hours I'm while running back <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have another back surgery so I'm going to start another business <laughs> <laughs> So oh, what's what's yeah. next then for endurance zone then? What what's what's the journey looking like? Obviously you're gonna expand to like forty eight, did you say forty nine? Yeah. Forty eight, forty nine staff, communications. We've got loads of really cool things coming, so where are the recruitment opportunity there for a lot of people to BDU with uh you know Yeah. I mean, if uh, anybody wants okay. to purchase his number, just drop us a note. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll sell we'll that sell, data. We'll sell that data. <laughs> In fairness, it's on it's on the website and it's also on LinkedIn. So go nuts, but I am anti-social. We never hear from it. Um, we've got we've got lots of stuff, really cool stuff. We're, we're believe it or not, we're rebuilding our entire platform from the ground up again. Excellent. Um, yeah. Because you build it and then you go, let's build it again better, and then let's build it again better again. Got, and that's better than having to just like continuously just tinker. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of businesses, especially within the SaaS world, will just bolt on. Right it's now. a big investment, but you you've, can't got, you've got to do it right. And we've got wearable integration coming, so you can integrate your Garmin, your Apple Watch, your Wahoo, your Whoop, which are, again... I don't know if he's saying brands or if he's just having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what happened if you wear one, right? <laughs> um, but exactly that is it that you can. Uh, I don't know. It just helps gamify it a little bit more. What's the plan? We're going to build this thing and we're going to we're going to sell it. So that's the plan. Are yeah. You- Ever gonna hit that direct to consumer market? Or are you just gonna stick with the B two B stuff? We have we have a we have a direct the to buyer consu- worry about that. We have yeah. a direct to consumer brand, which is Win Your Dream Bike, which was something we started in the cycling industry. Which was we were getting so much free stuff thrown at us, like bike brands and stuff. We were mm. like, let's let's set up a charitable element where we auction off basically a bike every year, every every month. Nice. And um, just accidentally turned into a fifty grand a month business. So it now is hmm, kind of pulled into the. Um, it's the same as endurance right now. It kind of pulls in in terms of it's an advertising play. We've got over a hundred thousand email mm-hmm. addresses of cyclists. So we hit them. We now charge brands. Brands will go here's a load of prizes to give away. We say great. We'll put you in front of this audience and we monetize it. So, but yeah, no. The plan is to grow it and then to sell it. You know, and then and then right up into the sunset. I don't know about run off into the sunset. I think it's more, uh, I'd like somebody else to then go, do you know what? You've done a bloody good job here of growing this. We'll take it off your hands. We can make it. But we want you to, yeah, yeah, somebody that can come in and add value to it and go, look, we'll take this, we'll shove a load more cash into it and then stay on for another. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the plan is to have that done in the next four years. You know, that's the business plan is to get it sold, but then stay on and and grow it and see what the next exit looks like. Why not? Why not? Not sell it and just stay on and just keep doing what you're doing. Um, it's a good question actually. It's always one that people ask ask all the time, and you, you just, I guess, the answer is you don't really know at this stage, right? You can you have a plan that you kind of stick to, and mm. you might suddenly turn around and this thing be turning over two hundred million a year, and you go, let's just keep this and let's yeah, run. This would be right? stupid. For Investors yourself. are happy yeah. and everyone's yeah, happy, yeah. but legacy for your kids. Know, I think, I think it's also looking at, uh, you know, I've got a soon to be six year old and mm-hmm. you know i'll see I, you know i feel i'm good at balancing it but i'm probably not and i just think if i can keep sleeping four hours a night and keep going and traveling all over the world and keep going get this thing sold give me some time to spend on here because you talk about motivating right it's a competitive mm. thing i just look at my wife and my little one that's it for me they're, they're the motivators mm-hmm. and yeah he's fortunate enough that he gets to travel with us and do things and he's got great experiences that he'll never forget and if i can keep that bit going that's that's enough for me sounds awesome so, yeah. it, oh, genuinely it's great to see you doing well and great to see that and you boys you, you're, you're kind of you know you, you've you've got the things that you set out because I, I mean I, like we we bumped into each other not long after your little one was born and yeah. and, and, and you could see, you can sense the change, and and, and this is. Um, you seem a lot happier as well. We're all, we're all, like, we're, we're we're all dads, right? Probably and all being a dad now. changes yeah. you. It really yeah. does. It changes kind of what you consider to be um, a priority, what you consider to be kind of important in 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 sort of the short term and the long term. Um, and it's it's good to see that you're a, a living, breathing example of there's life outside of recruitment if it ain't right for you. Yep. And don't be afraid to just kind of. Follow your passion. Yeah, go. Right. I'm oh, good at this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to give it a go. Recruitment because... gives you a lot of core skills and key 100%. skills, and you can use that in in any walk of life. It doesn't have to stay within that industry. Yeah, I I can, I can say having done it, I, I'd advise people if you're wanting to go into mm-hmm. sales and you're straight out of uni or college, go into recruitment. Choose a good one that has a great training plan, and just go and do it. Right, mm-hmm. learn. Mm-hmm. You know, don't overcommit and say I'm going to be here forever. Maybe you are, but just you know, time there just use it learn yeah, and then go and do what you want to do equally if you've got an idea go for it because a lot of people don't do it right a lot of people don't follow what they want to do they have these ideas and they disappear yeah yeah a lot of people don't back themselves because, do they? Yeah. makes it's sense just, I, can, yeah. I can see why people don't i can understand it oh yeah, yeah. The, you know i had hair when i started this you know no, you i'm getting gray no, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting gray and you know, my chest is like full gray now so and uh, a bit like your beard uh but oh. it's yeah just go for it it's worth it, it yeah, that hurts. But look, thank you very much for uh, taking time out to come and see us today, mate. I loved it. It's been, I've uh, done it's a been few it. podcasts, right? This has been the easiest one. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's like chatting with mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, it, well, it is, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a nice little walk down memory lane. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome to see where you're going in the direction of endurance zone and kind of what's going on. So, and if you two spec me a purchase ledger clerk tomorrow, I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> Mate, there's, there's all already is, mate. one on it. This is all just to get a two and a half grand fee out of you. There's, there's already one on its way. I told Tasha to send one over. I'll pay you two and a half grand not to do it. 
no, no, mate, it's tough, boys. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, if uh, anyone's wanting to find out more about Endurance Zone, where do they go? Head to the website, endurancezone.com. Com. Everything's on there. Check me out on LinkedIn. Um, check Chris. Chris, Chris is better to be fair. Check Chris out. On Chris, uh, yeah, Chris, check, check out Chris and then go to, to Dave. Then go to me if you yeah. want. If you want the <laughs> uglier version. Yeah, if you want to see version one, then yeah. go, go to yeah, Dave. Generally, if you're a if, you know a health conscious employer or you're a sports organisation, then check us out. We'll definitely have that. That's yeah. good. Appreciate it. Cheers, Thank folks. you very much, mate. Appreciate it. I'm getting a mic in the face. Okay. <laughs> Same. Good. I was going to the hour and a half. I wanted the record. <laughs> no, I blinked and I was like, shit, we're over an hour. The record is actually two hours. Is it? Yeah, we thought we were doing a lifetime for a little bit. And then it, just yeah, it disappeared, didn't it? Yeah. Why well, well, was it?